Hello and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last BQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of the session and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm talking to my practitioner who's asking me questions I prepared in advance of the session. And when I refer to me, I'm talking on myself under hypnosis, which means the answers are coming from the 25th. Before I start reading, I'd like to thank you, as always, for subscribing, liking, and commenting. It really makes a difference for me. When you connect, it makes me happy. But also, I would love to hear if the stuff resonates and uh, if you have any experiences you want to share, since we are all working on the same stuff in the background, and it kind of shows up in similar ways uh, on a 3D level. So I'm going to start reading here, and this part of the transcript deals with dreams that I've had. They are in the first stream referring to a dream I had the night before this one. So if you haven't watched my previous video, please do watch that one first, because basically this is an evolution that comes after that dream. All right, Lorraine. Okay, next dream from 24th of March. Clea says, I had a similar dream to yesterday's dreams. I didn't wake up in between scenes, but it was a series of different short scenes that ended with me being asked to do or having to do something that only I could do. They were super short, like I was on an island and I had to take care of something that would stop the sea from washing over the island or something of that magnitude. It would last like a minute and then the next scene would start. It's like I couldn't escape it, no matter the context. This is what I had to do. The difference with yesterday's dream is that I didn't dread having to do this. I was willing to do it, but then the scene would change anyway. In the final scene, I was somewhere and I somehow got transported to an island somewhere else. So I felt like I was out of the action or the center of the action where something was going to happen. And I thought I had to take care of it. Well, in this new place, I saw from afar that, and these are two friends of mine, and uh, their dad, so his dad, were walking through town on top of an elephant and people were out in crowds to listen to them. I felt cut off because they were friends and I was supposed to be with them. They were from the other place I had left. So now here I felt isolated in a way. Then I saw myself staying in a house with a group of people who were internet influencers and were creating something based on the cartoon Frozen. I left them to it because I was not part of the group. Then I went into the next room and another group of people came in and they told me that they were doing a gyrotope based on the cartoon Frozen. I realized they were famous and I was aware that they seemed tired of fans approaching them. So I was wanted to help to show them that I was just friendly. I didn't want anything from them. They were being distant by using the word gyrotope with me because I had no idea what it was. So I was an outsider. Finally, I asked them if it was like a movie, and they said yes. So I told them about my friends who were doing something similar, and that they also were influencers. And these guys finally warmed up to me. Then I was at the beach with these guys. The leader's name was Stephanie. We were still hanging out, but I was really worried that I wouldn't be where I needed to be when the time came for me to take action in two months. And finally, something came to me. I could use a portal to go from where I was to where I needed to be basically where the action was, which is where these two friends of mine and his dad were, and it would be instantaneous. So I was going to ask Stephanie to help me create a wormhole, but while I was waiting to speak with her, my daughter made a noise and I woke up. Does my daughter wake me up at the right time? Is she part of the dynamic or does this happen by chance and she's just interfering with my dreams? Are these dreams preparing me for the emotional piece of dealing with what's coming? What's up with the two-month timeline now? What happened to the 16th? What does this dream mean in terms of the gyrotope, et cetera? That was a lot. <laughs> These are all my questions that I had. And, uh, and I'm always peppering the 25th, as you guys know. Me. Yeah. And they were laughing. Yeah. So Clea's daughter. Yeah. So she does interrupt. However, again, this is never done against our will. Nothing is ever done against our will. Clea actually had a realization about this. She wrote this question down several days ago. She had a realization about this three days ago when she couldn't sleep. And she tossed in bed for a while, wondering if she should just get up. And then she gets up. So it sounds like a random time when she would get up. She looks at her watch and it's 104. Now you remember the code, right? 104. So you see, was it by chance? No, she got up when it was time to get up. So even when her daughter wakes her up, it's never that her daughter is playing against her or something. It's all part of the dynamic that we set up, that we choose. It's perfectly fine. Her daughter is here to distract her and also take her out a lot from the work that she's doing because it is a lot. And Clea does use her help, right? We all leverage each other. 
So that's okay. That's not a problem. It's never that her daughter is actually stopping her from doing the work. It's just when something either naturally comes to its conclusion or it's enough, the message is being received. So for the dream itself. So when I was in one place and then got transported to the other place, but I'm seeing people from the first place, which is earth. These are humans. These are friends, but I can't reach them. I can't talk to them. Again, this idea then becomes even obvious in the rest of the dream, this idea of isolation. We trust that you recognize the theme by now. Clay is very much still dealing with the fact that we have had to make different choices. And so we have isolated ourselves and continue to isolate ourselves even more now that we know everybody's an NPC. And again, why are we doing this? Why is she emotional about this isolation part? Oh, I made different choices. I'm different. So because of the choices I made, I cannot be hanging out with my friends because we realize our friends are gone. So Clea very much, and this is going to happen to more and more people because we're never working on just one thing on our own. If Clea is having these dreams, we are telling you, and they were chuckling, many people are having dreams that have to do with the fact that we're surrounded by NPCs. And because we are trying to cope with this, this is very hard for us. And so, yeah, the idea of isolation, again, it's coming up because we, in a way, wish emotionally that we had just gone along with everybody else then we wouldn't be here by ourselves. Not only, it would be easier, obviously, because we'd already be at peace wherever we are, but we would also not have had to say goodbye to our friends. So a lot of us are dealing with this. And then there was the part about the wormhole. Of course, we are getting ready to leave reality. That's really reality in dream state. We do see how things work. I mean, there's no time. So of course, even transport is immediate but also the dynamic of how she was being, again, rejected, quote unquote, by this group of people because she didn't fit in. They didn't know her or whatever it is, but somehow she found a way to have them warm up to her because really she wasn't. It's not like she needed them, but she's like, why can we not be friends? And so she's bringing value. She's connecting people. This is always what Claire has done. She's never taken it personally when somebody just, you know, people judge, right? People come up with ideas about you so they can have their own reality. They can convince themselves that they are right about the way that they judge you. But Clea has never really taken this to heart because she understands very well what goes on behind the scenes. And now we're all trying to play the game. And so in this dream, these people were trying to play the game and Clea was like, it's fine. But then eventually she found a way to connect with them. And yeah, one way they had to play the game was by using this term gyrotope, like saying, well, if you don't know what a gyrotope is, clearly you're not part of our game. Clearly you're not cool enough, right? Whereas all they meant was movie. <laughs> and the 25th was laughing because it was pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, do you mean a movie? <laughs> These are silly games that we use. And again, Clea could be, you know, you always have a choice. You take it too hard and say, I can't believe you treated me like that. Or you're not nice. But then you're playing the game too, right? Because we already said, whether you are the person who initiates or the person that reacts, you're still playing the game. Claire has never really been interested in this, even at 3D level with people. She doesn't really care when somebody's a little bit cold in the beginning or whatever, because she goes, yeah, that has nothing to do with me. That's who they are. That's how they like to be. But then I know I can win them over because I don't care. I don't judge you. I like you. And this has been the case throughout our life. It, it is very true. I do like people. I don't really care how they are. I know that eventually they'll warm up. <laughs> She said people that, I think we discussed this before, people were jealous of her, for example, in the NBA, because you know she was popular and all these things. And then they had to come around because she was nice to them anyway. So why are we saying this? Clay is no better than anybody else. We're not saying this to say this is the way to do things. Clay's job, what she thinks of as her job, has always been to bring people together and to basically let's all be happy, raise the vibration, you know? This is what people on the team of the light have done. And especially the 12,000, this is really part of the work that we think is our mission to do. And of course, we align with this, and this is the way it shows up. There is no judgment on the people being cold or judgmental or whatever it is. This is the game. This is the game we play. Clear is just as judgmental in other areas. Nobody's better than anybody else. We said this ad nauseum now at this point, but this is what's coming up in the dream. This resonates for Clear because Clear very much knows how she has lived her life. This makes sense, like she can see it. She can see that this would have happened and she would have behaved exactly that way. And eventually they would have all come to the point of saying, let's just be friends because isn't it so much easier to just get along? Claire always laughs at herself when she goes, can we just all get along? And they were laughing. <laughs> and I always laugh at myself for real when I say this. I'm like, cause it sounds like people say it here and it sounds like you're so naive for wanting that. And I'm like, 
why not? Isn't everybody just having more fun when we get along? <laughs> Let's just get to playing already. Enough with the drama. <laughs> But instead, we do want the drama over here. We always think that the more low vibration it is, the more fun it is. This, unfortunately, has been the quality of choices we've had available here. So again, no judgment. We've all supported it. So this is what this dream was reflecting, but also the fact very much that we are leaving and the reality is changing, you know? That's why we have the portal and all of that reality is very much changing. So we are, all of us, we're preparing for the takedown, which doesn't mean that the takedown is happening on the 16th or the 17th. We already said these days are just to let you know that time is coming nearer, but it could be a year. We don't know. It's up to you. So we don't want to tell you. Like you said, Lorraine, before, you know what's what, but then you're not so attached to a timeline because there is no timeline. It's not something you can predict. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you as always for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.